In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the reading list on the Chrome browser. The reading list is a great way to save articles, websites, and other web pages to read or review later. Unlike bookmarks, which are meant to be kept indefinitely, the reading list is meant for pages you'd like to read once or check in the future, and then bookmark or just discard. It's especially useful if you come across something interesting while you're browsing the web, but don't have time to read it right away. Using the reading list can also help you to better control the number of tabs that you have open at any one time. If you're anything like me, you can end up with 20 plus tabs open in your browser, and unfortunately, all those tabs that I leave open take up resources not just for my browser, but also for my entire computer, and the same thing would be true for you. It can lead to slower performance and decreased battery life. So I'm beginning to love the reading list as a way to help me control my tab habit. To add a page to your reading list, it's easy. You simply click the side panel icon located here in the top right area of Chrome, and the side panel will open. Now there's more options than just the reading list in the side panel, so if you don't see reading lists when you open it, use the drop-down arrow and then click on reading list. And once the reading list is open, you'll see anything that you've saved and not yet uh, read or deleted. Uh, but you'll also have the option to add the current tab. So I'm going to go ahead and add this tab simply by clicking it. And now it shows up in my list. If I close this tab, I can always open a new tab and get back to it by clicking on the link. And there's that page again. I'm going to go ahead and add the rest of my tabs here. Simply click on the tab, add it to the list, close it, click on the tab, add it to the list. It's quick, it's easy, and now I have a whole bunch of things about volcanoes that I can come back to later as I'm preparing the lesson. Now if I read through this, I can go ahead and I can mark it as uh, red by hovering over the link for that page and marking it as red. It now moves down uh, under a heading called Pages You've Read. If I decide I don't want that page or I'm done with it, I can go ahead and I can use this X to delete it. Notice it doesn't close the tab, so if I change my mind, I can always add it back. Or if it's something that I need long term, I can go ahead and add it to my bookmarks. I'm going to remove it because I don't really need it there, but that's what you can do with these as you've gone through your reading list. Now, the reading list might be helpful to your students when they're doing research for a project because they can do what I just did and save the websites as they're finding them in their search and then come back and read through them and decide which ones actually work for the project uh, that they're going to be doing. And personally, you might find it helpful for when you are planning a trip and you want to save a list of travel articles to read about where you're going before you go. But no matter what your purpose is, the reading list is a great way to save those articles, websites, and other web pages you come across to read later. It's easy to use. It keeps track of all the things we want to read, and it saves on the resources for our computers and gives us better battery life and better speed.